Canada, support international humanitarian relief operations, and assess the impact of natural disasters. This will be our second launch with NRO. The first was in 2017, and uh, that launch actually launched from the same exact launch pad as today's mission. Uh, this will also be our ninth mission for our national security customers to date. One thing to note for today's mission, per the NRO's request, we will not be sharing any views of the second stage today, and we'll be ending our webcast a little early around the T plus eight minute mark just after Falcon 9 touches back down onto land. If for some reason we are not able to launch today, we do have a backup window tomorrow at the same time. Uh, so far, we are, we are at T minus 12 minutes and 48 seconds and counting. All systems are looking good for an on-time liftoff. So let's take a closer look at the payload uh, and the vehicle today. What you're seeing is a view from Florida, specifically of launch pad 39A, with Falcon 9 getting ready for launch. Our rocket stands at 230 feet, or 70 meters tall, and that's greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. Falcon 9 has two stages and also uses two types of propellants, which we'll talk more about later on in the webcast. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. It's designed to be reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbishment in between flights. Uh, one way to spot a flight-proven booster is to look for that re-entry soot on the first stage. Today's flight will be the fifth flight for this particular first stage. Uh, its first two flights supported the CRS-19 and 20 missions to the International Space Station. It flew again in June for our ninth Starlink mission, and most recently in August for the SOCOM 1B mission. At the very bottom of the first stage, there are nine Merlin engines that will get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The two stages will then separate from one another. The second stage continues to orbit while the first stage makes its way back down to Earth for its landing attempt at landing zone one, which is actually not too far off from where it will lift off. There it is on screen. Uh, if successful, this will be the fifth landing for the booster on today's mission. It will also mark the 70th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. As for the second stage, that's what you see on screen, it will ignite its single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine about two and a half minutes into flight. It's this engine that will take the NROL-108 spacecraft to its intended orbit. And speaking of the satellite, it's currently safely enclosed uh, inside the 17-foot uh, diameter payload fairing, which is that structure at the very top of the rocket and what you see on screen right now. Uh, this protects the satellites from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing halves while the second stage continues to orbit. Both of the fairing halves today will be brand new. We'll also be attempting to recover them from water today using our recovery ships Miss Tree and Go Searcher. One thing to notice is some unique artwork on the fairing. Uh, this was chosen by the NRO because gorillas are peaceful animals, but can be fierce when necessary, acting quickly to defend themselves and warn others at any sign of a threat. And like the gorilla, this mission is constantly vigilant re and ready to defend its own, demonstrating the NRO's commitment to protecting the United States' warfighters, interests, and alliances. And finally, the large truss structure next to Falcon 9 is called the Transporter Erector, also known as the TE. Its job is to roll Falcon 9 out to the launch pad, raise it to a vertical launch position, and also route power, fluids, and communication to both the rocket and the satellite. We are about nine minutes and 20 seconds from liftoff. All conditions continue to be green. Uh, Falcon 9 rolled out onto the pad Wednesday morning and went vertical around 3 p.m. Eastern. More recently, the SpaceX launch director held the go no-go pole for propellant load and launch at the T minus 38 minute mark. We're currently working no issues on the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. Again, if we do have a hold to today's launch, we actually do have a two hour and 15 minute window that could allow us to reload the ultra cold liquid oxygen and make another launch attempt today. But this presumes that we understand whatever causes us to hold the count and can safely proceed with a recycle and launch. If we can't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow uh, at the same time. 
Falcon 9 has also been loading propellants since the T minus 35 minute mark when we started loading both fuel and oxidizer into uh, each of the stages. Uh, our fuel is a refined form of kerosene known as rocket propellant one. We also refer to it as RP1. Fuel is fully loaded on the second stage and will finish loading on the first stage around the T minus six minute mark. Uh, as for oxidizer, we use super chilled liquid oxygen. We also refer to it as LOX. Typically, launch providers use LOX right near its boiling point of negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit. Here at SpaceX, we actually chill the liquid oxygen another 40 degrees colder, making it denser and lets us, allow, lets us load more into the first and second stages. LOX is currently loading into both the first and second stages at the moment. We load it as late as possible to keep it from warming up and decreasing its performance. We're also finishing up helium loading. Uh, as the Merlin engine pumps pull RP-1 and LOX out of the tanks, we need to fill this empty volume called the eulage. We use the helium stored in pressure vessels and expand it using heat from the Merlin engine gas generator's exhaust. Uh, in about 20 seconds, we'll have engine chillin beginning. This is where we allow a small amount of super chilled liquid oxygen to flow past the turbo pump inlets, cooling them down to avoid thermal shocks when we light the Merlin engines at the T minus two second mark. The spacecraft team also transitioned uh, the NROL 108 payload to internal battery power around the T minus eight minute mark. But we're currently working no issues, and so no, no further actions are required before launch. As for the range, they are standing by to support today's mission and are currently green. Uh, for weather, uh, it's cloudy on the East Coast, but we're still 70% favorable for an on-time liftoff today. That said, all systems continue to be go for an on-time liftoff of 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time. As I mentioned earlier, the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO, is a joint Department of Defense intelligence community organization responsible for developing, launching, and operating America's signals, imagery, and communication satellites. Here's a closer look at the NRO and its capabilities. RP-1 load is complete and closing out. T minus three, two, one, zero. Ignition. We are the agency that made the impossible possible, protected the world, and brought technology to levels undreamt of. Go Atlas, go Centaur. The race to space was a series of firsts, and we were there. We were the first to surveil our adversaries from the high ground of space, literally taking technology to new heights, watching our adversaries, guarding against the threat of nuclear war and providing strategic advantage to our nation. We were the agency no one had heard of because we worked in total secrecy. But we've stepped out of the shadows and we are writing the next chapters of American space technology. We are the National Reconnaissance Office, the NRO, the world leader in our tradecraft collecting top secret imagery and signals from space. Natural disasters threaten thousands of lives. Conflicts displace millions and adversaries mount threats. We give advance warning, aid in the aftermath, protect our citizens and safeguard the world. We are the only agency that develops these tools partnering with the intelligence community, the military, and the best of private industry to drive innovation. We are the leader in space intelligence systems, the NRO. At the heart of it, our people, people who take satellites from idea to orbit, focusing talent and resources, developing, building, launching, operating, sophisticated NRO systems that help us maintain global vigilance 24-7, 365. Small sets made possible by miniaturization, reducing costs and expanding possibilities. Large satellites with capabilities designed to answer our toughest national security questions. Pioneering achievements on the ground 
where analysts bring it all together. How do we do it? By investing in the latest research and development, using augmentation, automation, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, employing acquisition strategies to encourage competition, enabling us to work with the industry's best and brightest, like-minded people committed to technology without limits. This is where careers rise to heights unimagined, where you can take your eyes and ears into space. We deliver, under budget and on schedule, meeting and exceeding expectations to answer questions yet unasked. We develop new technologies every day and put them to use in record time in the high ground of space. No one can match us. The National Reconnaissance Office, the world leader in intelligence gathering. We are the NRO. We are just over two minutes until liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The vehicle remains in good health. Um, about two minutes ago, the transport director began to retract away from Falcon 9, providing clearance for liftoff. Um, and uh, in just a few seconds, liquid oxygen loading should finish loading on the second stage, and that'll wrap up propellant loading. At the T-minus one minute mark, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers are now controlling the launch countdown. The range continues to be green for launch, and the weather uh, still remains cloudy, but again, we are still 70% favorable for an on-time liftoff today. As a reminder, if we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. It does look like we have a hold to the launch countdown. Let's check in. We're going to check in with the team to see if we can get uh, some more information on that. Give us a second. Okay, just checking in here. Uh, we are waiting for the teams to debrief and we will report back when we get more information. Again, we had a hold to the countdown at the T minus one minute and 53 second mark. Again, we're just waiting for the team to debrief.